So coffee is kind of sacred in my house. As a teacher, it is my cup of fuel for effective education. And for Everett, it was actually a job and a passion before I met him. He used to roast coffee when he was in college, which meant that he got pretty intimate with different mechanisms for roasting, different bean origins, and different tasting notes. So when COVID struck, we kind of were like, you know, our social life pretty much tanked. Not that we had much of a social life to begin with, but we used to go out to visit lots of coffee shops and try lots of different roasters' takes on coffee. And we couldn't do that anymore. So we turned to at home brewing and we joined a subscription of a called Drift Away Coffee. I am not affiliated with Drift Away Coffee. I'm not getting paid by Drift Away Coffee for this. But um, they basically send us, well, first they send you a little tasting kit with a bunch of different samples so you can figure out what your tasting profile is. But then they send you a pound Oh, this isn't a pound, this is actually 11 ounces of coffee. We sit, since switched to the pound size, um, but they allow you to order as much or as little as you like each month. Um, and they, they send you a coffee from a single uh, origin farm. Uh, in a, you know, in this one's from Guatemala. This one is from uh, Tanzania. We are actually going to be drinking the Tanzanian roast tonight because it's a darker roast. And darker roasts mean less caffeine because it, the process of roasting things darker leaches out more of the caffeine and makes them less caffeinated. So this is a great alternative to absolutely and utterly decaffeinated coffees, which I think are a travesty unless you absolutely have to drink them for some sort of medical reason. Otherwise, why would you do that? Seriously. We use a Chemex because we both really like the um, extraction of the Chemex coffee maker. And it's a very simple process. You put in the filter. You, we put in one of these, you can see that it's an eighth of a cup scoop per cup of coffee. Um, a lot of people weigh theirs. I just, I don't have time for that. I have to get coffee made in the morning so I can get on the road. Not that I have a very long commute, but still, I'm always on Miranda time. Miranda time means I'm frequently late. The rest of the world needs to get on Miranda time. Instead of using an actual gooseneck kettle, I use this little gooseneck pitcher. And there is a good reason for this. Um, I have this really nice DeLonghi uh, electric kettle that I use to make tea and I did not see the purpose or the point of buying two electric kettles. We are a one electric kettle household and that'll be fine and um, we'll just use a little gooseneck pitcher. It's a very simple process. Um, you've put your two scoops of beans in there for your two cups of coffee and you just lightly pour very slowly, very evenly, a little bit of water on top of the beans to let them bloom. Just gets them a little wet. They start kind of releasing some of the oils and things like that. We had a little gold mesh uh, Japanese set up for a while, but I found that the coffee oils tend to clog them, so I really like the paper filter. Um, I like the, if I have my choice, um, I will buy the undyed, I'm sorry, the unbleached paper filter because then I can just throw it into my composter, grounds and all. Um, however, it's been really hard to find um, any kind of Chemex filters. Uh, we went to four different stores uh, this weekend trying to find them and eventually found that a cost plus world market about 15 miles away from us was hoarding like 30 boxes. So um, we were able to get some, but it, it was just it was a little touch and go there. We, we got too close to being out of coffee filters and that would have been potentially dangerous for myself, my students, and my husband. 
because uncaffeinated teachers are not the best and brightest. So we're going to just let that trickle down and the goal is to pour enough water on there that it's constantly dripping but not so much that it's really sitting on the beans. You don't want to get the whole like kit and caboodle all wet. You just want to pour, I mean, okay, take that back. You don't want to flood them. You don't want them sitting in water. You just want to kind of pour it on there very slowly. Let it breathe, let it extract. In fact, like, I don't even like really tilt the, the kettle. I just kind of keep it even and level. And that just pours enough water out to really just keep the beans a little submerged without being drowned. You don't want, your, you don't want to drown the beans. I am by no means a you know trained barista or anything, and I've seen some really great pour over videos out there where like they measure out the beans and they like really measure the water and you're like, okay, wow, um, this is taking on whole new levels of like meticulousness. And I just really want to make some coffee. Like that's really what it gets down to. It's it's a science, but it's also an art, but it's also just something that, you know, you you learn from doing you learn from doing it. You learn from practicing. You learn from like figuring out like how much water is the right amount of water. The big thing though that like really made it or bro broke us was um, bean, the bean grind. Um, while that's stripping through, I'm gonna show you guys what a Chemex grind looks like. looks a lot like cornmeal. That is that is essentially, you know, you want it to be not too fine but not too coarse. Um, it needs to look kind of like cornmeal. Because um, otherwise, too coarse means it, it extracts way too fast, the water pours through too fast and you don't get, you get a weak cup of coffee and no one wants a weak cup of coffee. But if you get too fine of a grind, like an espresso grind, um, you get like really, really, like it takes forever for it to get through and you get really bitter coffee. And if you get any coffee at all, it's, like I said, it takes forever to pour through. Um, you, I use one of these per cup. So if I have two cups of coffee, two little kettles. That's one of the other things I really like about this. I hate wasting food and coffee and stuff like that. And I think it's really important uh, not to waste. I, I don't think it's, I think it's important not to make too much. And I think, like a, a Mr. Coffee, like drip coffee pot, you typically it's really hard to get a cup or two. You really kind of have to make at least half a pot. And while I probably could drink half a pot, um, I probably should not drink half a pot. Um, no one would keep up with me then. I would be like Fry in the episode of Futurama where I can smell sound. Um, when it gets down to the last couple dregs, you, you know, I usually just throw it in the composter because if you let it just drip out, that's like the most bitter part of the coffee is the last little bits. One of the other changes about COVID was um, we became very creature comforts and brick. So all of a sudden, milk wasn't enough. It became half and half. We had to use half and half. It just, it's, it's more rich than milk. It is delicious. So that's how we make coffee in the Layshaw house. If you enjoyed coffee time, like.
like and subscribe. And uh, I highly recommend, even though I'm not affiliated and I'm not getting paid, I highly recommend the Drift Away Coffee Subscription Club. They're just really cool and they're all about educating people about coffee and what coffee can do and what coffee can do for the farmer, which I think is really important. Um, they're all about how we can pass everything on to the guys in Guatemala or El Salvador, um, Tanzania, Kenya, the places that are growing our coffee, and how we can make sure that they see more of the profit. Um, and, and that's always a good thing. So drink your coffee and uh, take care of yourselves.